This is a review of Sheldon Axler's Linear Algebra Done Right, 3rd edition. Uh, it's a really popular textbook. I enjoy it a lot and I just want to share what I think about it. So this book assumes that you have maybe some bit of mathematical maturity. So if you've taken calculus and definitely if you've taken any proof-based course, you have enough to follow this book. It doesn't assume that you've taken any linear algebra before. But obviously, if you've taken a first course in linear algebra, like a more elementary treatment of it, where you deal with uh, matrices and vectors in R squared and R cubed and so on, you have enough background to get into this. So let's take a look. From the table of contents, we can see that it talks about vector spaces at first. So you see it starts right off the bat from vector spaces it doesn't actually start with solutions of linear equations and the matrix formulations of those things like more elementary textbooks will do. So this book is really suited for a second course in linear algebra. But anyway, the treatment of vector spaces is very elementary. It starts with defining complex numbers and lists or what people would more refer to as n-tuples. So it's very gentle in its treatment of that and it talks about subspaces and direct sums. So if you take a look, the actual contents of it, they give very straightforward definitions of what a complex number is, and they explain very elementary things like the fact that multiplication of complex numbers is commutative and they actually work it out. So this is what I mean when I say it takes a gentle approach and the exercises well, for this first part, the exercises are pretty light and very focused on complex numbers, but, well, not entirely, because, for example, this question, it says, find x in R4 such that this equation is true. So it's just trying to get you to realize that x is actually a four-tuple. So clearly, if you just have some calculus, not that calculus is required here, but if you're accustomed to reading mathematical notation and so on, you can get by with this book, you can get into it. So the entry bar is not high. What else do I like about it? Well, the coverage of the book itself is very far. So it goes into finite dimensional vector spaces, you know, span linear independence and so on. And it has a pretty big chapter on linear maps uh, up to products and quotients of vector spaces. And I like that it has an entire section on duality. So let's see, that's page 101. It gives you the definition of a functional and then it tells you things like an example of a functional is the integral of a polynomial where this functional is a map from the space of real polynomials to the space of real numbers. So I like that it lays out easily digestible examples in a very clear manner and as you notice they have all these colorings and and boxes and so on that make it pretty easy on the eyes that's important more important to some people than others but i like it and let's see it says let e1 to e5 be the standard basis of r5 and let these be the dual basis elements of the dual space to r5 and it's asking to show that the annihilator is the span of these three elements of the dual basis. I like this question and the way it is worked out in full detail because it really helps you to appreciate the con more conceptual details while seeing it fully worked out. So this book is really great for self-learners as well as for people who are just taking a class that's that's my opinion. What else does the book have? It has an entire chapter on polynomials. So this chapter doesn't really do any linear algebra per se. It just tells you about the division algorithm, the fundamental theorem of algebra, and it teaches you how to factorize polynomials over the complex numbers and over R. This is more in preparation for dealing with operators because you know, it goes into you know, eigenvalues, eigenvectors, 
inner product spaces and so on and then it starts talking about operators on inner product spaces and operators on complex vector spaces and operators on real vector spaces so this book is big on the theory of operators and one thing i like about it well two things actually the treatment of adjoints is very clear and this is something you do not hear about possibly within even your first two courses on linear algebra some universities put it off until a like a third course or like a specialist course and this chapter on complexification is really well fleshed out i found that this was a welcome addition to this book well to any book on linear algebra so i was i really liked this book because it had such a treatment of it so if you look at page 276 this is complexification so it says, as we will soon see, a real vector space can be embedded in a natural way in a complex vector space called the complexification of V. Each operator on V can be extended to an operator on the complexification of V. So the first time I came across complexification was when I was looking at some papers from mirror symmetry and stuff on geometric quantization, and I didn't even know what complexification was. So when I saw this book have an entire section dedicated to complexification, I was pretty happy with that. It's actually one of the reasons why I bought this book. Um, the book doesn't have any solutions at the back. I suppose that's by design, but on this channel, I have a playlist where we'll be working out every single exercise in this book. So look out for that. And also this book is used as the text for the Linear Algebra Rigorous course on this channel. So I hope you enjoy that as well.